Well, good morning everyone to the service around bread and wine and thank you again to uh, the singers of St Martin in the Fields who uh, have put all this music together for us and it's wonderful to be able to share in it and I have to hold myself back from joining in but I'm wary that it will go out on Facebook and that might not be a good thing. So, welcome to all of you. It's lovely to be able to share together again this morning. I just have a little uh, health warning, which is that my internet signal has been very intermittent this morning. So if I disappear, I won't have gone up into the clouds as we celebrated the Ascension, Ascension this week. Um, I, I will just have disappeared because there's no signal. And then what I'll do, if that happens, I will record the service, the whole service, and then post it again later. So trusting that won't happen, but it may. We begin with an opening greeting. What I haven't said is welcome. If you are new to all this, um, if you have never dipped into a church service before, which you may not have done, then welcome. You can dip in and dip out of the service as much or as little as you like. As we come to worship together, we'll hear some music, we'll hear some prayers, We'll hear some words from God and you might hear a few words from me. So our opening greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So as we come together, we always come and join together in a prayer of preparation, preparing ourselves to open our hearts to God and what he may have to say to us this morning. And so we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Let's spend a few moments in silence as we gather ourselves afresh before God this morning and before we come to say a prayer of confession. So we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we come to our collect, which is a special prayer for this day. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And 
So we come to our readings for the day. And our first reading is from the book of Acts chapter 1, and beginning at verse 6. On Thursday of this week, we celebrated the ascension of Jesus to go back to be with his Father in heaven. And this reminds us of that. So Acts chapter 1. So when they had come together, the disciples asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has sent by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said that this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mothers of Jesus, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we come to our gospel reading for the day, and we have an introduction to our gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. So John chapter 17, and here we have Jesus praying to his Father. After Jesus had spoken these words to the disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have given, received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Shall we pray?
Holy God, as we come before you this morning, we pray that you will help us to open our hearts, our minds and our lives to all that you want to do among us. We ask this in your name. Amen. So I've already mentioned that on Thursday of this past week we celebrated the Ascension of Jesus. So today is the Sunday between our celebration of the Ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, a period of 10 days when traditionally the Church had, turns its focus to prayer. We do what those first disciples did, having experienced Jesus leaving them. He told them to go to Jerusalem and wait. In that time, Matthias was appointed the twelfth disciple in place of Judas. But as they waited, they prayed and they prepared. And next week, in our Pentecost service, we will celebrate what happens next. I have said that traditionally the church focuses, focuses on prayer, but prayer, of course, is what the church does all the time. It is our calling to pray. Not just priests, vicars, church leaders, but all of us. Prayer is a gift to us. It is a means by which we open ourselves up to the higher being that is God. And when we pray, we consciously or unconsciously accept that there is a presence among us to whom we offer ourselves and that we are being listened to. We accept that we are not alone, that God is present with us and is hearing our voice, listening to our deepest desires as we express to him all that is in our hearts. Prayer is not formulaic. We all express it in different ways because we are all individuals. Some people are stimulated by words, others by images. Some people find it wonderful to be in silence. Others need other people with them. Some engage in prayer uh, by using art, some with icons. The important thing, though, is that we do pray and that we do see it as part of our calling. Jesus prayed. In the Gospels, we're told that at times when he was surrounded by people, he went off alone and went to pray. He taught the disciples to pray, that wonderful prayer which we'll pray later, our Father in heaven, or our Father who art in heaven. And in this morning's Gospel reading, we hear of one of his prayers, prayer recorded in John chapter 17. There's a very real context to this prayer. He's been talking to the disciples at the Last Supper. He is troubled. He's just declared that one of his friends would betray him and one would deny him. There's an air of him thinking about his disciples and wondering what he has accomplished in his time with them and whether they are really ready for what is coming. At one point he says to them, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. The word if makes me wonder if he is unsure about that. He's also in, unsure about the world, saying that it hated him. And then he says, the hour is coming when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. It is a tough read, but what does he do at that point? He turns to prayer. A prayer of love for his father, a prayer about calling and vocation, a prayer of serving, sharing and of witness, of which in this morning's reading we only hear a part. But what is notable, noticeable, I think, in that prayer is what Jesus doesn't do or pray. He doesn't isolate or close him in on himself. He doesn't get angry or resentful. He doesn't resist or fight back against what is happening around him. He doesn't run away or try to escape. He doesn't complain about or deny the reality of what is happening. Instead, he faces his life. 
He's in touch with his humanity. He feels what he feels, he grieves, he weeps, he gathers with friends, he prays, he lives what is happening, but knows that resurrection follows death. And that is our faith, no matter what we experience in life. Resurrection follows death. Jesus prays a prayer of love for his Father, that he will be glorified, that his name will be known and that he would, he would be known, the true God. And in praying that, you have a sense that he is lifted beyond that trouble as he looks to his Father. And many of us, I guess, have that experience too, that in prayer we can be lifted beyond our immediate trouble as we look up and give thanks and praise to God who has and does sustain us in difficult times. At present, we might be physically restricted, but our minds and spirits and our hearts are free to worship God, to deepen our relationship with him and to grow in love. Jesus was bound in an unbreakable oneness of love with his Father, and it shows in this prayer, as he prays that his Father will be glorified through him. And Jesus prays for his disciples, that they will be protected, that they will have a full measure of joy within them. And the joy came. Within a few days of the ascension, the disciples seemed to, soon to be apostles, soon to be sent out, experience the unbounded joy of the coming of the Holy Spirit in a kind of explosion of colour after the darkness of the cruci crucifixion and the blinding light of the resurrection. It was a joy that propelled them into sharing the gospel with thousands of people. I said earlier that we're all called to pray and th 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 that this is a time when the church traditionally focuses on focuses on prayer and we're doing that as we take part in thy kingdom come you know sometimes we get really stuck with prayer don't we and sometimes we don't know what to pray but Jesus did give us the words if you're struggling with all of it or any of it or you're struggling with anything do this one thing pray the Lord's prayer every day at the moment, as we go through thy kingdom come and these days, we're praying the Lord's Prayer every day at midday, all together. Because the, although we may not be able to join together physically, we can join together in prayer and know that there are others praying that prayer with us. And indeed, that the worldwide church is praying that prayer together. And as you pray the Lord's Prayer, maybe that will spark something in you that sets you on a trail of thought and prayer that expresses your own heart longing to God, because he is listening. At the start of this period of lockdown, I had a real sense in me that I and we had to do what we could do. I was very taken by a, a verse in scripture when Jesus spoke of a woman, the woman who anointed his feet. And he said of her, she did what she could. And I felt very strongly that this was a period of time when all of us needed to do what we could. And that led, has led to many different sorts of things happening. And I believe it has also led to more prayer happening among us. What can we do when we're stuck in our homes and it's difficult for us to go out because we're shielding? Well, what we can do is pray. And what, what we can all do is pray. But if you need some challenge, just think on this for a moment. We can all pray, but I think sometimes God calls us to a specific task in prayer that only we can do. The responsibility is ours. 
Over this last few weeks, I've been encouraging you to pray for specific people during this period. I've been using this piece of string to remind me of the people that I'm particularly praying for. I asked you before that to kind of ask God, who was it that he wanted to lay on your heart to pray for in this period? Think on this. You may be the only person praying for that person at this time. And that gives you a responsibility. It gives me a responsibility to pray and to pray for that person because God has laid that person or that situation on your heart. So sometimes we can forget, sometimes things are kind of, we, we can't think about our prayers. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. But you know, you never know what is going on under the surface of someone's life. So keep praying for those people that God has gifted to you to pray for and rise to that challenge. So I thought it would be appropriate if we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Shall we do that now? We'll take a few moments of silence as we ponder on what God has given to us and all that he has gifted to us in prayer. And we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we continue in our prayers of intercession. And if you're able to respond out loud, then feel free to do that in your own homes. And when I use the words, risen and ascended Lord, come among us. If you can respond with, fill us with your glory. Risen and ascended Lord, come among us. Fill us with your glory. Holy God, as we come to you this morning, we come to pray for your church. We give you thanks for the work of your church in these times. We give you thanks for all that people are doing. For food banks, for phone calls, for communications happening in so many different ways. We give you, thank, give you thanks for our life of worship in so many different ways. That there are Christians all across the globe, worshipping by serving others, showing servant-heartedness, meeting needs. And Lord, we pray for that voice of social justice, to ring out across the world at this time. As we see the poor being hit harder by a virus that continues to spread through our globe, across our globe. As we see many disenfranchised. Lord, help us to meet needs where we can, to be compassionate people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for your creation. We give you thanks that as we look around us, your world has had chance to breathe over these last days. 
give you thanks Lord for a reduction in pollution and smog across our world. We give you thanks that we are being more and more aware of the birds singing around us and of the beauty of your created order. Lord, as we re-emerge from our lockdown and as governments seek to move economies forward, we pray that we would not lose what we have gained over these last days. Risen and ascended Lord, come among us. Fill us with your glory. And we pray during this COVID situation that continues in our own country and in many countries across the world. We pray for the desperate and the despairing. We pray for those who are downcast and feeling there is no way forward. We pray for those who are struggling with difficult mental health conditions, for those who are low, for those who are struggling to discover hope in this crisis. We pray for the weak, the ill, we pray for those who have life-limiting illness. May they each be given hope and courage and strength at this time. And we pray for all those, Lord, who day in and day out, in their work, in their volunteering, are offering compassion and love to those in need. We continue to pray for all those who work in our nursing homes and their residents, for those who are in our residential homes and their residents, for those who work in our hospitals and hospices and for their patients. We pray for all carers who are working in the community, for those who are living in for those who are visiting every day. Lord, we give you thanks for hearts of love and compassion. We thank you for the sacrifices that many have made to meet the needs of others. And Lord, we pray that in every situation, your kingdom would come and your will be done. Risen and ascended Lord, Come among us, fill us with your glory. And Lord, we pray that all may in heart and mind ascend and experience your power and your glory. We pray that we may rejoice with our loved ones who are in the fullness of your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so normally at this part of the service we come together to share the peace and in church we would do that physically together. However, we're not able to do that now so I'm just going to leave a few moments of silence when you kind of call to mind someone you want to share the peace with this morning and do that as a kind of an image uh, in your head that you might share the peace with that person. It might be somebody you haven't seen for a long time, somebody that you're just kind of feeling for at the moment. Um, it might be someone you have connected with every day in some way. But let's try and share the peace together as we gather online. A few moments of silence. God has made us one in Christ, he has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. 
And so we come to bread and wine. A prayer of preparation. Lord of all and source of our joy, receive our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Keep us in the love of Christ and bring us to the vision of his glory through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great high priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving gift of Pentecost, of the Spirit of Pentecost. Therefore all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for, for us the body and blood of your dear Son. For on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come to the Lord's Prayer which I'll say in the more modern version, but please feel free to join me in the words of the more traditional version if you prefer. So as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
we pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. And so we pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. That when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
so before a prayer of blessing, I'll be back here again at 7 o'clock um, this evening. And at 7 o'clock will be a service of Compline. And there are various events or activities happening as we move through this week. And the newer one of which is that at normally at 9.30 on a Wednesday morning, we would have a more informal service of Holy Communion. And so we're going to do that this Wednesday and I'll try and keep that going when we can to do communion uh, together. Now that uh, will then be followed by a coffee morning and that will be on Zoom. So that will be about 10 minutes past uh, 10, I guess, on Wednesday morning. So various things happening. We're managing to just bring more and more things online. And so it's lovely to be able to share with whoever joins us at that time. And so a prayer before we move into the blessing. So a prayer as we approach Pentecost. Come Holy Spirit, breath of God, renew us and inspire us. Come Holy Spirit, wind of God, refresh us and move us to do what is right. Come Holy Spirit, fire of God, warm our hearts and disperse all our dullness and coldness. Come Holy Spirit, power of God, enable us and help us to live to your glory. Come Holy Spirit, set us ablaze with a desire to be your loving presence in the world. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and everyone you connect with this day and always. Amen. Lovely to share together, lovely to be together and I hope you've enjoyed, both enjoyed the service and that it has had meaning for you. Take that meaning into your day. Just think about perhaps reading the whole of chapter 17 of John's Gospel and listening to what God says to you through it. Give it some time to just kind of soak in. And so have a wonderful day today. Enjoy your day. I'll see you, see you for those that want to uh, join me together at seven o'clock this evening for Compline. God bless you all and lots of love to everyone.